Hi, this is Calvin here. Welcome to Trade the Markets Like a Pro, a series of webinar series focusing on technical analysis, trading education. This will be module 11, risk management part three. So before we start, let's take a look at the disclaimer slides first. All right, so in part three of the risk management tactics that I will share with you all will be focusing on firstly correlation and risk. So uh, basically what is correlation? Correlation is actually a statistical figure that measures the movement and relationship of two financial instruments. So basically the correlation is displayed as a number between a minimum of negative one to a maximum of positive one. So put it in a very simple term, a correlation of positive one means two instruments are perfectly positively correlated. That means they move in lockstep, one for one. In the reverse or in converse, the a correlation with negative one means two instruments are perfectly negatively correlated, means they move in opposite direction. So to simple graphically, so to, to graph it in a very simple form, just assume that correlation is assumed to be linear, even though it's a scattered plot. So this is from a range of positive one all the way to negative one. It can be any number in between, all right? So a positive correlation, we call it a perfect correlation. What we could see is that, take this as above x, this is y. So whatever x move by one, y also move similarly, all right? So this is 0 0.9, this is 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 is almost uh, scattered. So there's no strong positive correlation negative 0 0.5, low negative correlation, and negative 0 0.9 to negative 1, you start to see a highly negatively correlation. All right, that means they move inversely for these two instruments. Okay, so with that graphical uh, explanation, let's take a look at how does it applies to trading. Okay, so when it comes to trading, uh, you know that we have, we could have a lot of asset classes to trade, uh, also depending on our trading capital. Okay, so the more trading capital we have, put it in a very simple terms, we have more trading opportunities to trade. But however, we need to take into account of correlation of the asset classes that we want to trade. So let's say, for example, if we long or short two instruments simultaneously, they are positively correlated. That means they move together, our risk actually increases, which is actually not very good from a risk management perspective. Yeah, if the expected directional play goes against us, so a negative correlation can as decrease risk, can actually decrease risk since two instruments move in the opposite direction. So if one rises, the other will fall based on the past price action behavior. So this is what called a hedging kind of a, a, a tactic. All right. So, uh, but bear in mind, we do have a bit of caution that I want to share with you that correlation are actually based on past opposite observation of data. In the, hence, in a dynamic environment, correlation can change over time. So even though right now these two asset classes are positively correlated, in the near future, I, we cannot be 100% sure that their correlation will remain positive. So once this, this, this uh, correlation starts to change, our trading strategy should actually be, to be dynamic enough to actually change with it as well. So basically, right, uh, let's take a look at these two instruments. One is the, the one highlighted in orange line will be the S&P 500. The one highlighted in the purple will be NASDAQ 100. So what we could see over here, this is uh, close to about three months, okay, three months of movement. So in the last three months, they are actually perfectly correlated. Okay, even though I don't do a statistical, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, calculation or derivation, we could see from the graphical form, they actually move in lock, lockstep, okay, positively correlated. Uh, so I would, visually, it should be close to about 0, uh, 0 0.8 to 0 0.9. So let's say, for example, if our trader were to enter two trades in the same direction, that means of the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100, either two longs or two shorts, the trader actually increases the risk if we are wrong in terms of our dash directional expectation. That means if we long both of them together, what if both of them suddenly reverse down? So if SPX reverse down, it also has a higher chance for the NASDAQ 100 to reverse down as well. That means we are actually doubling our risk. That means, i.e. our losses were doubled if we entered two same directional bets on these two positively correlated instruments. All right. Now, let's add in another instrument into these two. Okay, it will be the Hansing Index or the Hong Kong 50, the one in green. 
you will see over here. So in the last three months, especially the last one month or so, we could see that the Hansing index actually moves against the opposite direction with the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100. Okay, it's coming down. S&P and Nasdaq 100, S&P 500 and Nasdaq 100 is going up. So what we could see over here is that the Hansing index and the S&P 500 together with the Nasdaq 100, either one of them, they're actually negative correlate with one another. All right. So let's say if a trader who enters a position of two longs or two shorts, that means I, if I enter a long position on the Hansing, or if I also enter a long position on either the S&P or the 500, I'm actually decreasing risk. Okay, if my directional expectation fails to meter right. So why? Because think of that both of them are negatively correlated. So let's say if I enter a long position on Hansing, I enter a long position on Nasdaq 100. So let's say forever if Nasdaq 100 falls, so I will lose money on Nasdaq 100, right? Because uh, I expect it to go up further because my initial position was long. But I also enter a long on the Han on 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 uh Hansing index, all right, over here. But if Nasdaq 100 were to come down, because it's negatively correlated with Hansing, the correlation will actually be, be, be opposite. That means Nasdaq coming down, Hansing will tend to actually move up based on its you know previous negatively correlated movement. So I will actually lose my, my long position on Nasdaq 100, but I managed to hedge it a long position on Hansing. Okay, so this is called the, hunt, the, the, the hedging uh, uh, principle to actually uh, long two similar uh, position again, uh, with two negatively correlated financial instrument like the example that I share with you. Okay, so then another way of, uh, this is actually reducing risk. Huh? Another way to reduce risk or uh, quite adjust the position sizing. So if you recall that uh, in the part two of the risk management tactic, I did uh, share with you the 2% uh, risk factor. That means I have a maximum risk of 2% per trade. So let's say for example, if I have three losing streaks, that means I risk, I, I actually start losing three times in a row. So there's actually a probability, uh, it, it doesn't mean that I always win in a row. I mean, there's a possibility that I may start to have a losing streak three times in a row. Uh, it could be due to bad luck or it could be due to the system that I'm using doesn't, uh, we call it a gel with the current financial instrument. That means I need to tweak the, the, the trading system that I have. So what I'll have, obviously, if I start to lose three times in a row, I could actually reduce my risk by a factor of two. So what this by the factor of two stands for? Okay, let's say, for example, right, if my account three times a row drops to negative 10%, that means I'm down negative 10%, I will assume the account loss is twice of 10%, two times by the factor of two. So instead of losing 10%, I will I assume that I lose 20%, negative 20%. So let's say if I have a trading capital of 20, my net balance is 20K, 20% loss of 20K is 4,000. 4, so my new balance now is 20K minus 4K, which is 16,000. So let's say if I were to enter another trade, the next opportunity, my max risk on the next trade, I reduce it off to 2%. Okay, the risk factor, the factor 2% still remains the same, but I said I use 2% of 16,000, which is 320, instead of the normal risk, which is at 2% of 18,000. So this 18,000 is, I'm assuming the loss of 10%. Well, I'm not really assuming, I'm actually uh, uh, stating the real loss of 10%, well, 16,000, I'm assuming the loss of 20% by a factor of two. So by doing this, right, I'm actually able to reduce my risk of $40. Okay, why I'm doing this over here is because I am actually in a losing streak right now. So being a losing streak right now, right, there's a chance that my next trade might lose as well. Okay, let's say if I'm present with a, a trading opportunity, yes, I could take the trading setup, but I want to reduce my risk because I am a losing, I'm in a losing streak right now. And also, it enables to us to overcome that trading psychology that we have in our, in our mind at this moment in time because our trading psychology right now will be tend to be more negative because we are losing three straight, three straight consecutive losses and we are very eager to make back our loss where we tend to actually forget about our trading uh, risk management uh, principles that we have set in place earlier on. 
So this actually helps to actually, uh, 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 we call it, uh, negate this negative uh, psychology that we have after uh, have witnessing uh, three consecutive losses of or three consecutive losing trade. So with that, uh, I will share us more about trading psychology in module 12 of Trade the Markets Like a Pro. Okay, see you, see you all in my next video.